So today's video is based upon feedback from previous videos. Thanks everyone for that. Someone made the point that there's no charging infrastructure for EVs and that must be a concern. And of course, since I've just bought an EV, indeed it would be. So I thought I ought to check that out. I thought the best plan, without thinking about it too hard, was to head to a city where there's lots of people, lots of cars, and work out whether there's any infrastructure for those people and those cars. I didn't think about it too hard, I just headed for Oxford because it was a relatively easy place to get to. I used a, an app called ZapMap on my phone to work out where the chargers were, went and visited them, and then took photos of them. Let's have a look at those. So I started as I headed into Oxford at the Thornhill Park and Ride. There's 1300 and 35 spaces at Thornhill Park and Ride and it seemed like an obvious place where you could park up and plug your car in while you go off and do whatever you need to do in the centre of the city. But what I found was pretty disappointing. There are just two charge points here and that's not a great start. That doesn't really seem to promote EVs in the way that I was hoping, so maybe there is no infrastructure. Not only were there only two charge points, they were actually tucked away in a corner that was quite difficult to find and in a bit of the car park where you wouldn't necessarily feel very comfortable to be for very long. So that's not great. So maybe these people were right, there's no infrastructure. So the next most obvious place to try on the ZapMap app was the Tesco Superstore on the Southern Ring Road. Here we find four 7 kilowatt pod point chargers. Tesco and Podpoint have teamed up and most Tesco stores have Podpoint chargers, very often 7 kilowatt chargers or more. So Tesco is always a good place to head to if you need a charge. So the next place I headed was Lidl, just around the corner, again obvious from the ZapMap app. This Lidl has a 50 kilowatt CCS rapid charger but it also has Chadamo and AC so it covers all bases. A lots of little seem to have rapid chargers, so that's a really good extra resource to know if you haven't got your app open, just head for a little maybe if you need a top up. Um, the one thing I would say about little is that some customers seem to have had fines for using the charger without using the store, so just be aware of fines. Um, I tend to avoid littles for that reason, um, just in case I forget to go into the store and register my car. Just round the corner again from Lidl is a place called Laddenham Road. This is a residential street and here we find three post chargers. I walked straight past these to begin with because I didn't realise that they were chargers. I didn't know what I was looking for to begin with. So how great that they're blending into the background. The residents who live there know where they are and that's the point of them. These ones are for residents, uh, but not necessarily everyone will see huge signposts to them. And I think that's a good thing that we don't want to clutter up uh, our place of living with lots of big signs that call out things uh, that we probably all know. So the next place obvious on the map was John Smith Drive. This was a little more difficult to find just because the natural location of, from the postcode is on the other side of the building to where the chargers are, but I found them. There's two 7 kilowatt AC chargers here and they can be used by people who visit the, uh, the business that they're outside of, although there is also an NHS um, diagnostics area here and people who use the NHS diagnostics area may want to use these chargers as well. Next was this point on Vicarage Close. This is relatively easy to miss other than the fact that there's an EV charging bay outside the front of it and sometimes looking for the charging bay rather than the charger itself is easier. So there's two charge points here. Uh, the car charging on it was actually a clue to its location fortunately so this one was nice and easy to find. Again a residential street intended for residential use. So next was the science park and the first place is the Bell House building. Now there are 12 7 kilowatt chargers here, AC charge points, which is really great to see and gives people a chance to charge while they work. So you don't necessarily have to charge at home. If charging at home is not particularly convenient, then maybe you'll be able to charge at work in the future instead. Next on the Science Park is Robert Robinson Avenue, two 22 kilowatt AC points at this location with a sign above to make it easy to find. Next up, again on the Science Park, was the Schrodinger building. Here there are six 22 kilowatt AC charge points. Ideal for charging while you work or if you're visiting somewhere in that location. 
And these are a bargain, they're only 25 pence per kilowatt hour, which is amazing value. And finally, in that little local area, just outside the Science Park, TJ Hall & Son is a, an independent garage who have got a 7 kilowatt charger installed on the wall. I suspect this is mainly for customers. Next up, I found two 7 kilowatt AC charge points at the Rose Hill Community Centre. These two are free to use, but what a great idea that you can charge while you're doing something in the community centre. And then I came across the Redbridge Park and Ride site. Wow, what a site this is. This is really impressive. This is the future, really. There's 10 Fastned rapid chargers here, 350 kilowatt DC rapid chargers, fantastic. Then on the same site, just around the corner, there are 12 Tesla Oni superchargers, V3 superchargers, 250 kilowatts each. And then just on the other side of a divide, there's 20 22 kilowatt AC chargers. These are for while you go into Oxford, while you're doing the park and ride thing, 20 of them, fantastic. DC rapid chargers and AC chargers have slightly different use cases really. You use a DC rapid charger when you're on your way somewhere and you need a quick top up. But if you're intending to be somewhere for a little while, then it's best not to block a very expensive DC rapid charger and instead use an AC charger, which is much cheaper to install and maintain. So kudos to Oxford City Council. I think this is a real, really good template for how charging hubs need to be. And I think it also makes uh, park and ride much more attractive if you can get a top up while you're catching public transport into the city centre. What a great idea. So I'd found a reasonable amount of infrastructure in a few hours in Oxford, but I'd run out of time at this point. So I went back for another go on day two, because I could see from the map there was plenty more. Indeed, a lot more. As I walked around the city centre and up towards the north of Oxford, I found these. And these. And all of these. and these, and these. And these. And all of these. Lots on residential streets. These ones built into street lamps, for example. They really blend into the background, so you wouldn't know they were there unless you needed them, unless you were looking for them. So, there's loads in and around Oxford, so I thought, well maybe I misunderstood the feedback that I'd got. Maybe what they meant was there's no charging infrastructure on the strategic road network, the motorways and the A roads. So I had a look at that as well. At Beaconsfield Services, there are four CCS chargers with various connectors run by GridServe, and then there are six Ionity 350 kilowatt rapid chargers. Oxford Services is looking a little thin on the ground at the moment. That only has two CCS rapid chargers run by GridServe, plus 12 Tesla only 120 kilowatt superchargers. Chilwa Valley Services has benefited from GridServe's expansion program. So it still has two 50 kilowatt CCS rapid chargers, which are replacements for the originals that were there in the first place plus two 22 kilowatt AC charge points. But now there have been six 350 kilowatt CCS rapid chargers added very recently. It's also worth noting that just down the road there, there are four SO rapid chargers, plus two by Instavolt at the McDonald's. So that's an alternative place you can go if Cherwell Valley happens to be busy. It's also worth mentioning that Junction 11 of the M40, not on official motorway services, but there's an Instavolt charge hub right off the motorway where there are 32 CCS rapid chargers, fantastic site. There's also a chain coffee store here so that you can grab a drink while you're having a break from driving. Really nice site. Warwick Services has a more traditional split layout northbound and southbound. On the northbound side, we find 16 Tesla 150 kilowatt superchargers and three 50 kilowatt CCS rapid chargers. That's a little bit limited these days. On the southbound side, no photos here, unfortunately. I forgot to take them on my travels. Uh, but there are, again, there are 16 Tesla superchargers, 150 kilowatt here, but only two CCS rapid chargers so far. And that's probably not gonna be enough. 
But having said that, they are GridServe, and GridServe, I know, are working through the network, improving the infrastructure, increasing the number of chargers available. In fact, there's been charging infrastructure on the strategic road network for quite some time. And I think it's worth just touching on the history to call out a couple of companies that have been instrumental in its setup. Ecotricity first set up a charging network called the Electric Highway in 2011. Back then, it was 13 amp plugs and commando sockets. It was pretty basic, but it gave EV owners an opportunity to travel in a way that they hadn't before. Technology was moving pretty quickly with EVs, and before long, Ecotricity would expand the network by installing a series of DC rapid chargers based upon the CHAdeMO charging standard. That was the DC rapid charging standard that the Nissan LEAF uses, and seemed like a safe bet. Unfortunately, Europe went another route. The EU mandated that any manufacturer bringing a new car to market that offered DC rapid charging must use the CCS charging standard. And that meant that Ecotricity had to do another upgrade. Unfortunately, what they did was they adapted their CHAdeMO chargers by installing additional equipment into the same cabinet. And that infrastructure that they installed to do the adaptation proved not to be very reliable. The electric highway seemed to be set up somewhat altruistically by Ecotricity. It was free to use until December 2015 when charges were finally introduced. What's more, it was backed by a 100% renewable electricity guarantee by Ecotricity. I think we should thank Ecotricity for their work in promoting and enabling EVs in those early days. Unfortunately, their network became synonymous with unreliability because of the adaptation that had had to be done to those early CHAdeMO chargers to make them capable of doing CCS. In 2021, GridServe took over the electric highway network and they have systematically replaced every one of those early chargers with a new one, which hopefully will be more reliable. As part of phase two of their work, GridServe are also rolling out a whole new set of chargers to expand the network as fast as they can. I've been really impressed with what GridServe have to say and they seem to be backing up what they're saying with action. Let's hope that continues. So was Oxford a fluke? Did I accidentally go to a place where there was loads of chargers? Well, let's have a look at the charge point map and see how it looks. This is that map showing all of the charge points. I joined the ring road at Headington and I did all of these along the southern edge of the ring road up until Redbridge Park and Ride on day one. Then on a second day, I came back and I went from Redbridge north through the city centre, covering all of these in these residential areas and the city centre itself. But I didn't get to cover any of the eastern area over here and nor any of these charges on the western side by the ring road, not to mention any of the outliers outside of the ring road itself. So did I get lucky with Oxford is Oxford better covered than anywhere else? Well, let's zoom out and have a bit of a look. In fact, you can see where all the cities are because they're quite well covered. This one is Swindon, for example. And certainly if we look over at London, look at the sheer density of chargers and how silly it looks trying to individually map every single charger in the greater London area. That is a lot of chargers. But then there's a lot of people there. That's 8 million people we need to cover. If we zoom out and have a look at the whole country, you can see that actually there aren't all that many gaps where there aren't charges covering the areas. There are certainly a few areas in Wales where there's no coverage and a few in Northern England, but we may find those are places where there aren't very many people. The border between England and Scotland might look a little bit sparse, but the south of Scotland looks very heavily covered. Up in the highlands of Scotland, there is little coverage, but there is also far fewer people and fewer roads. Ireland is looking a bit thin on the ground, and Ireland may need some more coverage, but having said that, Ireland is not particularly heavily populated. Because they have a wealth of useful information, Zapmap publish statistics about the EV market and about charging. 
and here we are in June 2023. Let's have a look at the latest statistics on the website. So in June we've got 25,500 locations, that's increased significantly even in the last month. 44,000 charging devices, totaling 70,000 charging connectors, all public UK charging points. And that is an increase of 1,677 in the last month alone. And there's plenty of other useful statistics as well. Hop across to zapmap.com and have a look for yourself. So things are looking pretty good at the moment, but that's not to say there aren't challenges ahead. Some DC rapid charging sites are very busy at the moment and they're going to need extra chargers. But as I've said, both GridServe and other charge point operators are racing to do that as we speak. So I don't think we're gonna have a big problem in that area. It's also true to say that DC rapid chargers have been a bit unreliable in the past and we need to see that improve. Hopefully GridServe's replacement of those early ecotricity chargers, which were unreliable due to their unfortunate adaptation to CCS, will help in this area. Tesla seem to be showing us the way in this regard. Tesla's charging infrastructure is over 99% reliable. So let's hope that some of the other charge point operators can reach that level. What's interesting about Tesla's charging infrastructure is that they don't require payment terminals at each of the charge points. And certainly the payment terminals seem to be one of the most unreliable parts of the infrastructure as it exists at the moment. Perhaps if we can get plug and charge to work, where the charger knows who owns the car that's plugged in and bills them directly, then maybe we'll be in a better position in that regard. The other thing we're certainly going to need is more charging on residential streets. But as we've seen today, that is already on its way. What is also encouraging is that there's government support for helping to solve the problem. There's a thing called the On-Street Residential Charge Point Scheme, which is a government funded program where local councils can apply for money to improve residential charging. I don't know if this is a program that was only for a single year, but I doubt it. I suspect this will continue into the future. And here's an example of what that funding can help bring about. Surrey County Council have teamed up with Connected Curb and are installing 10,000 charge points in their area, partially funded by that program. And that's only one scheme probably of many that are going on at the moment. I mention that one only because I happened to meet the Connected Curb team whilst at Fully Charged Live this year. And I was interested to hear what they had to say because of this very problem. It's also true to say that investment doesn't have to come solely from government. There is plenty of investment coming from the private sector to solve this problem as well. So in summary, I'd suggest that you don't worry too much about charging infrastructure. It seems to me that it's coming along quite nicely. And we've got time until the legislation requires that clean vehicles are the only option. It certainly helps at the moment if you've got off-street parking. If you can put a charge point at home, then an EV is a no-brainer. If you're worried about your local area and what you would do because you don't have off-street parking, then by all means, speak to your local council. It's quite possible that they're already working on something. And if they aren't, a little nudge in the right direction may get things moving. As ever, thanks for joining me today. Feedback and comments are most welcome. The comments section exists for that purpose. If you've liked the video, then please do click the thumbs up button as that improves the chance that someone else will get to see it. And subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks.